Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage, The Vault Series. Today's clip was shot back in October of 2008. I just finished doing an interview with J.I. Allison of the Crickets when turn around and here comes Corky Casey O'Dell. So we added this interview onto the same tape. Corky, if you don't know who she is, was, was the first that I know of female rock and roll side chick as Dwayne calls her. She, he played on Dwayne's very first album with songs like Rebel Rouser. She played rhythm guitar. She also played on other hits like The Fool. But I think the thing that she's probably the most proud of is her, her relationship and her work with Dwayne Eddy. They remain lifelong friends. She also married one of the LA's top session musicians, one of the top bass guitar players and guitar players, Al Casey. When that didn't quite last, she came in to Nashville and married one of Nashville's top songwriters, Kenny O'Dell. Kenny wrote one of Nashville's biggest hits in the 70s for Charlie Rich called Behind Closed Doors. It was a TV series, it was movies, it was a massively big hit. Corky talks about that, playing with Dwayne and, and just being a, a mother after all that ended. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Once again, Corky Casey O'Dell. You may be one of the very <laughs> first female. I'm the very player. first rock and roll side chick, as Dwayne calls me. Uh huh. That's that, neat. Mm hmm. Yeah. He calls me his side chick, and that's and that, I guess that's it. Yeah, I'm first one played rhythm, guitar on a record. I know I was out of Phoenix. There was no one else. Probably the one that's gotten the most recognition is Carol Kay. Oh, sure. I know. Mm -hmm. I know her. I had the privilege to meet her here at one of the guitar shows that mm -hmm. came in. And that was a very privilege for me because I know it's for all the ladies. Of course, now we have lots of, of great ladies playing their guitars. And, and uh, so they, they made it. They got it. So that's great. I'm lo I love seeing that. Me, I'm just staying home being a granny and a <laughs> Help Papa. <laughs> Did you ever get any recognition being a, a lady no, musician? No, I never have. Really? I never. In fact, this is my first interview I've ever done. You're kidding me. <laughs> yeah, I so can't I appreciate that. that. No, I never did. Uh, Dwayne, uh, I think he talks about me a lot. Uh, through his fan club and out on, you know, that I was. And on, on the album, it had my name, Corky Casey, and they thought I was a brother to Al. That's, that was always a daily. So we didn't know there was a lady on there, a girl. So when I was, oh, probably a senior in high school, I saw, I watched television with Marty Robbins on it, and, and uh, it was Mr. Ray Odom who had a television a station that had uh, this group of men on it that I love called the Sunset Riders and they were playing at a at a Madison Square Garden in Phoenix it was a big hall there and so I thought in high school I thought well now I, I would watch them and I, I thought well I'm gonna go and just see what that's about and I'm gonna hire them to play one of our school dances and I did uh, they didn't think I could do that but I did and I hired them I married one of the musicians, Al Casey, uh, and I would watch him every week, and he was a fine musician. Uh, he was on steel at the time and played steel. And so, of course, I, I, uh, I said, well, there, there's a guy I'm interested in. And my niece, I remember, she said, you can't do that. You can't go down there. And I said, well, I'm going to go. And sure enough, I did, and then I got acquainted with all of them, and that's how I met Al. And so I met Lee Hazelwood. And we went into the studio um, probably 55 or 6 for my first recording, and that's where I met Dwayne. He was there, but I was recording on a record. It was by Sanford Clark called The Fool, and it was the first hit record out of Arizona. And uh, so I was real excited about that. And then uh, we, I went to the um, Madison Square Garden again where they worked and, and uh, Lee came over and says, Corky, I'm gonna take this uh, young man, Dwayne Eddy, into the studio and I'd like for you to play rhythm guitar. So we did. And I, of course, I was really 
into my guitar. I was pretty good for what I was doing. And I played a little double aught 18 Martin, which I still have. And it's been used for years and years, and I just love it. Um, and then so that was my, so we went in and we cut Dwayne and for days there, and I was the only lady on the session. But they were all fine musicians and a gentleman to me, and, and I sat with Lee Hazelwood in the studio and him throwing things and cussing and, and <laughs> everything else like we do, but that, it was just fine, and we came out with those. We didn't know we were making history. Name some of the songs that you played on for Dwayne. On the, well, I worked on Rebel Rouser, 40 Miles of Bad Road, uh, his whole first album, I worked that. And that's how that ended up. And as today, Dwayne and I, we're still friends. We only live about 15 minutes apart. And we try to see each other as often as we can. And of course, we talk about all the old memories and keeps them going. And so that's, uh, that's where I am today. And um, I still love music. Then I went on to learn bass also. I played bass. Uh, so from then on, then I would form groups and I worked uh, the Nevada we worked Nevada all up in there for years and around, and I was in a couple of groups before I moved here in 1970. Do you feel awkward being in there with a bunch of guys? I mean, tell, no. tell me how that felt. To, to it, I wasn't awkward at all. I felt very comfortable because I knew them all, and we all worked, you know, we worked around the clubs and the joints and all, and we knew each other. and. We really didn't know what we were doing. I mean, it was so new, the history of, of learning to record. And, but no, I wasn't at all. And I would sit with some of uh, all of them and we'd be there for hours and days. And then, of course, you didn't get paid a lot. <laughs> and I mean, when I received my first, ch my first check, I think it was $40. And oh, I just, that, you know, wow, now this, this must be it then to be able to earn money doing this. But I, I would love to have gone on and been a session player, but I don't think I was that qualified actually. I, because I know good, great musicians like all these you have in here, they're fine musicians. Now I made my way and all, but uh, it was just, that's the way, that's when I stopped. What did you think when you, or can you tell me about the first time you heard Rebel Rouser or one of these songs on, on the radio? On the radio, oh well, we just jumped up and down. It was so exciting, and we just couldn't believe it. And then Dwayne, he he was just a hit overnight, and they, and so I was a recording rebel, and then he had his rebels that he took on the road with him, the band. I never did travel with Dwayne, and. Uh, so they got, you know, we started hearing about them and they were going to be on bandstand and we're all, you know, just beside ourselves because it was unbelievable, actually. Because, and then, then I, I was on a couple hit records like The Fool. That was a very big record by Sanford Clark. It's still in print. And also another record by Jody Reynolds called Endless Sleep. And I recorded that in L.A. Uh, and I played... I played a cardboard box with the brush on it, and it's still in print. So all, all these stories, they're just great stories that you have and you remember. And oh yes, we were excited about just unbelievable. And then he, got, he bought him a new home to Wayne and we're all over there and he's in there cutting more of his albums. Then he went on to LA to, to uh, do his recording. So that's when I, settled into my other jobs and so forth. And then also then I, I later married uh, my husband today, Kenny O'Dell, who's a songwriter, and we moved to Nashville in 1970. And I just, and I retired from playing. I helped him on demos, things like that. But I, I retired, I wanted to be home with the children and, and uh, do that bit. I never got to do it, so. Were you there when you and, wrote Behind Closed Doors? Oh, yes. Can you give me I your, was there your side and of that? We were, we were there, and I heard him. We had just moved here, been here almost two years, and uh, everything was getting a little, you know, we didn't know quite what was going to happen. Uh, we came in. Uh, he worked for Bobby Goldsboro and Bob Montgomery in the publishing, 
And uh, so we ended up, it was getting kind of dire straits there. And I heard him in the, first he wrote, uh, take it on home for Charlie Rich. And that really, that did real great for him. It, that was really a good starter. And then I heard him in the bedroom and I heard him saying, get behind closed doors and let her hair hang down. And I thought, so I'm in the kitchen and he come down and he said, well, what, what do you think uh, you're listening? I know you're listening. I said, well, it sounds kind of like a dirty song to me. <laughs> I said, I don't know. I said, now behind, we let your hair around down. But it turned out to be beautiful. But he wrote it in where he had just a little space around. That's where he wrote behind closed doors. And then it ended up to be a great song for us and helped us in our life a whole lot. And thank you, Mr. Cheryl, for that. And Charlie Rich, of course. Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take him to write it? Behind closed doors? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Well, not very long. Because he, he was working after he had the first take it on home. He's, he's, he just started right in trying, you know, working. And he and Larry Henley, our friend Larry Henley, they, he would come out and they sit on outside on the steps and around and write, writing these songs, you know. But then he was always the loner. He loved to go in by himself. And uh, it probably didn't take him, I'm not sure, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe, or maybe not that long. I'm not sure because he just, he got the idea and it, and it stuck. So he got the idea and he simmered on it for a while. Uh -huh, and, and, he, and it stuck. It, it didn't just fall out in 30 minutes. No, yeah. no, it wasn't that short of yeah. a song. It took him a little while and then, but that was really, <laughs> it's been now, great. Speaking of hearing someone on the radio, I bet y'all really, when you heard that, you had to be. Oh, and Mr. Rich, and then hear that, and then knowing all the great, fine, the musicians. That's what I enjoyed most of all, was going to a session and just watching all these fine musicians put it together. Go in there and here it comes out, just great. You know, that, that is just so neat. I think that's just great. But well, that uh, yes, was a, that was a... We, we were really excited. I mean, you know... Now, Kenny won a Grammy for that, didn't he? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, he did. That's um, that's not that's something not many people get to say. Yeah, I know. Now, we've been very fortunate, and uh, lots of, of fine artists have, have done his songs, and I'm very proud of him. Very proud to be a part. Still here, be a part of it. <laughs> that was a that was a monumental record in the in Nashville because of of it crossing over, you know, and really uh -huh. bringing a lot of uh, attention. To the pop. Pop. Pop field to, also. To hear, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was country. Yeah. It was country. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people listening to country radio. Mm-hmm. I know. All right. Well, Corky, thank you so well, much. It's been, well, thank you. This has been really a thrill. I don't know how it's going to sound or turn out. But I, I know. <laughs> I've been watching it. It's going to be great. <laughs> And I think what you you have done, uh, and you, Mr. Joe and Linda, have done a great job with this fabulous building on recognizing some of the finest musicians that I could love to work with or and have got to meet. And I feel so honored in that. Thank you. Uh huh. Good evening, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to take you back to the mid-50s when, if you can believe it or not, there was no rock and roll. <laughs> it was building, but it wasn't until early 56 that Elvis Presley came along with Heartbreak Hotel. And then all over the country, people started cutting rock and roll records. And we were no different in Phoenix. We cut uh, our brains out and, on uh, everything we could think of. And we found this, uh, we found that, uh, you know, there were no lady players at that time, except we found that Corky Odell here played a pretty mean rhythm guitar. So she did a few sessions. And then about that spring, she went in one day and cut a session with a guy named Sanford Clark called The Fool. 
and they got to be in the top ten. And after that, she had all the work she needed. <laughs> and uh, she worked through 57 and uh, playing on records, and some of them were mine. She went to California and played on a hit over there with Jody Reynolds called Endless Sleep. And then she came back to Phoenix in March of 58 and recorded Rebel Rouser with me. And the next 14 or so hit records that I had, she was on. And she just kept doing that until one day she met a songwriter. <laughs> oh, that songwriter's name was Kenny O'Dell, and he became the love of her life. And he wrote a song called Behind Closed Doors and Mama, He's Crazy. And then they moved to Nashville where they've lived happily ever after. I'll try to get through this. <laughs> It's been very many moons since I played my guitar, but this is the greatest night I've ever had. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna cry if I don't get off. So thank you very much.